We now have Pauline Van Dongen. She's a fashion designer uh, who put out a recent collection called Morphogenesis. And through that collection, she also developed a 3D printed shoe, which was done in collaboration with Freedom of Creation, who has their 3D printer set up over there in the corner. Uh, so Pauline is going to give us a short presentation on her research, uh, why she decided to engage with 3D printing technology, and uh, what the future of the, these various technological practices, such as laser cutting, 3D printing, how they're becoming popular in the fashion industry. Pauline. Thank you. Um, I graduated from my bachelor in uh, 2008, just to give a short introduction, and um, I continued into a master at the Fashion Institute Arnhem, uh, where I graduated in July 2010, and after that I continued working on my own label. Um, these shoes were, these 3D printed shoes were developed uh, for my graduation collection, Morphogenesis. Um, I, hope, I hope the Beamer will work to give you more images of the whole process. <laughs> I'll just continue with that. Uh, during my master, I was offered uh, a shoe design course, and um, this was really an eye-opener for me as a designer. It really triggered me in very unexpected ways, um, especially the rigid aspect of a shoe. It um, made me develop even more an arti uh, um, architectural and structural signature, which you now still see in, uh, in my uh, clothing designs as well. Um, I am... Um, I really like to work as a researcher. Um, I like to work with new materials and innovative techniques. Ah, well, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> we'll skip this one. Here you can see the, the first shoe that I uh, designed and made myself. And at that point I also learned how much time it takes to develop a shoe by hand with a traditional craftsmanship. Um, Here is a picture of the shoes. Uh, with designing shoes and also uh, with designing clothes, as I told you, I, I look for new materials and innovative techniques. I think um, innovation really advances our idea of uh, what fashion could be in the future. And I think since fashion is always rapidly changing, it's, uh, it can um, incorporate uh, the newest developments. Uh, this shoe was designed, as I told, with my collection Morphogenesis. Um, with Morphogenesis, uh, I started out with a fascination that I have. I'm very fascinated by the way um, people behave in their surroundings, the interaction that they have with their environment, the relation between human and their surroundings. And for this collection, I researched the space that's the closest to our body, the space between a body and a garment. And with um, certain materials, I wanted to emphasize on this void. Uh, I searched for new materials that I could use, which is, for instance, the synthetic crin, uh, braided nylon, which acts very sculptural on a body. When I was working on it, I always start directly on a body, making drapings and moulages. And um, it actually made me feel like a, like a sculptress myself. Here you can see uh, some of the process. I was inspired by the artist Anthony Gormley, who uh, also works with the space around the body. And here you can see some of the first um, mock-ups. I also found a, a very interesting uh, material that's been used in hat making a lot. It's called bunto, and it's a woven wood fiber from the Philippines. And it may seem quite rigid from a distance, but it's actually very flexible and moves very organic around the body. And to me as a designer, for me, it's very important that the body is what, give the, what gives the garment a certain shape and not the other way around. Um, I started out with designing the shoes. And the first problem that I had is, like, how would I be able to design 10 pairs of shoes, make them by hand within a limited time, and also designing the whole collection, of course. And someone told me, like, why don't you buy these prefabricated heels and... Well, I googled them online and I was really devastated by the ugliness of it. So I thought I have to find something else. And that's how I got in touch with Freedom of Creation, who will be presenting later on. 
um, they're very experienced in 3D printing, and um, I came to them like with the idea of designing completely 3D printed shoes. And I didn't know if it was able, if the technique was already there to do it, but um, we just tried it out. And it turned out that I could go even further with the, with the whole uh, design, because with 3D printing you have endless possibilities of constructing the shoe, and you can make shapes that um, you wouldn't normally be able to make by hand. Here you can see also a series of the final result. Um, with these shoes, I s I've translated the organic and sculptural feel of the collection into um, a heel, uh, which is also very organically. Uh, models have been working on the catwalk with them, and <laughs> someone is showing them now, but um, I must say they're not comfortable yet, not, not enough, because um, the material is still quite rigid and has some limits. We've tried to make one sample in a rubber version, which is very flexible. And ideally, we would combine the rubber and the polyamide to make a st structural, functional heel and a more soft, wearable uh, strap. The technique is there already, so. Is it just trial and error in terms of the material to know it is. To what's me going it to is, work? Because I, I had limited knowledge of the technique before I came to Freedom of Creation. And uh, they're still developing a lot of the materials and a lot of the printers. So there's, there is a printer now that can print two materials at once. So, but it's, it's evolving, so. They've been uh, exhibited around the world. They've seen more places than I did, <laughs> so it's very nice. Um, do you want me to continue on what I've... Well, I have a few on? questions concerning the shoes, perhaps, mm -hmm. before we move on to what you're working on. The first of which is, other than the time constraints, what are the advantages of 3D printing a shoe? Um, I think, like I said, you have endless possibilities regarding shape and construction and application things that you wouldn't normally be able to create by hand, you can with 3D printing. And um, also, if you want to create a limited series, um, it's way more, I mean, it's still an expensive technique, but it's more, it's cheaper to do it with 3D printing compared to like um, injection, making an inject injection mold and having to produce thousands of pieces. So, and I think also for the future and for regarding sustainability, um, it's very nice that you work with 3D files 3D files, which you can send all over the world, and you ha don't, won't have to, uh, you won't need as much transportation as you would normally. Can the fabric that they're made out of be recycled? Is it a sustainable? This one can't. <laughs> it's a polyamide, but there there are um, materials in uh, development that can be uh, more uh, eco. And uh, it seems that they're quite challenging to wear. Is it just the height <laughs> or is it the feel of uh, them? It's a combination. Uh, since the material is very rigid um, and this strap, it really strains your feet. So that's one of the things why it's not comfortable. We try to put some springs in here, which is also printed at, one in, at once. Uh, and also the height, of course. They're very high, so <laughs> it's a challenge to walk on them. And how did the, the cal collaboration with Freedom of Creation, um, could you sort of take us through the process of what are the steps um, to the end product? Well, I, I just called them at first and they were very enthusiastic because they, they have been designing some shoes in the past but never really uh, got to the point of making it a whole shoe printed. And so they immediately want to support me with the project. And um, I showed them my first sketches and Jana uh, the owner of the company told me like, well, you can, you can get, go crazy. I mean, this is not, you c you're not using the technique uh, as optimal as you can, because you can do anything with it. So I went on sketching further, and then I eventually came to this design where I think I did use the technique uh, as much as I could. Now that you know more about the potential of what can be done with 3D printing, then would you imagine these differently? Because it sounds like perhaps your first idea was limited in terms of what you, th what you knew about 3D mm -hmm. printing. So mm -hmm. uh, what else could you imagine now uh, that you've worked 
more now regarding that you've a, in it. a certain product or regarding something? shoes regarding for shoes example. well um, I was thinking more about clothing also <laughs> uh, at the moment I'm making a, a wedding dress which is partially 3d printed which is also very exciting and I think it's a very uh, challenging thing to focus more on wearability and see how we can use uh, structures or maybe materials that are more uh, soft and more wearable friendly to the body so that's something I'd like to focus on with, with future projects with 3D printing. Shall we talk about your future projects? Um, yeah, this is, screen? this is my uh, recent collection that I just wanted to show you very briefly, um, which is inspired by space itself, how we see space and um, how light influences our perception of space and can create illusions of 2D and 3D uh, surfaces. James Turrell and the work of Anish Kapoor are always a very big inspiration to me. Um, again, I start out with the drapings and also the, the wood fiber that you see in the right swirl. Um, for this project, I went to several fab labs. Um, most of you might know about them. Uh, where I could use a laser cutter. I cut up all these different patterns in leather and silk and reassembled them into structures that appear to be three-dimensional and play with light when you uh, move around them. Um, I started again on making some shoes and I had this um, idea of a layered transparent heel, which I laser cut out of perspex or uh, plexiglass, how you say. Um, but this was the first prototype and uh, it's always actually trial and error with me. <laughs> um, I tried it on the model and it break, broke immediately. So I started on um, making new prototypes. Here you see an overview of uh, some of the garments. It's again a play with, with light and volumes. These are the pieces, the end result. And at last, you see the shoe design. I made a construction where these layered uh, laser cut plexiglass shapes could slide in through the, how do you say, grooves of uh, a wooden sole. So that's what I want to show. So <laughs> combining old and new. Um, yeah. Are there questions from the audience? From the fashion people in the audience? I think Wilco has a, has a mic. Don't be shy. Um, practical terms? Well, just, oh, there we go. Who's going to, well, that will go. <laughs> um, is it easy to adjust the design to the size of the foot? Uh, with the 3D printed shoes, you yeah. mean? Yeah, that's, that's also something that's uh, very interesting. I think uh, in the future, um, also designs like shoes or maybe clothing can be easily adjusted to... Uh, individuals when you for instance 3d scan a body or a foot you can like mold the design in, in your 3d program according to that shape which is something very interesting also for ergonomics and wearability so and i i, I asked the same question to christine i'm wondering um if you are designing these for a future where we will indeed be able to print our shoes at home uh, do you realistically anticipate this and how would you prepare for it as a designer? Um, I think in the future, I mean, I think 3D printing is a technique of the future and eventually people would have their printers at home. Uh, I mean, people are already making their own printers and printing little things. But I think the, the difference that will be um, set is that um, you still need a certain expertise and um, uh, focus on, on quality and quality and wearability and that, that's where maybe designers are still uh, coming in. I mean, people have their printers, their normal printers at home, but if you want the best result, you go to uh, a fresh professional uh, print shop or print office. So there's, there will still be a difference between having your printer at home, I think, and um, printing a more professional piece. <laughs> so we'll still need designers and we'll still need good I technicians hope so. <laughs> yeah, and professional no. machines. Yeah. Thank you so very much, Pauline. We'll Thank move on too. to Freedom of Creation who can tell us a bit more yes. about 3D printing. Yeah.